Hello, hi, I'm Shane K. Crypto Habit, and this is Golden Treasure, the Great Green. Now, Golden Treasure is an adventure survival game slash visual novel to some extent, in which you get to play a dragon. I mean, who doesn't want to be a dragon, really? So, uh, you know, let's uh, check this game out together. This is a demo version, by the way, that's available on itch.io. New life. From the very beginning, yes. Starting in game, yes. We're gonna start since we were zygote. A box without hinges, key or lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. What is it? Bilbo Baggins. It's an egg. You are alone in the chamber. There is one wall which surrounds you utterly in every direction and on every side. The wall is made of love and it embraces you. Its inherent goodness is an obvious and complete truth. There is a rhythm in the chamber, a beat and a flow which has always been. It is the only way you can tell between sleeping and waking. When awake, you can feel the rhythm and when asleep, you cannot. Which time do you enjoy most? I enjoy being awake or I prefer the quiet of the sleeping times. No, I enjoy being awake and alive and feeling the rhythm. Feel the rhythm. Sorry. Um, even now in the beginning, you reach toward change, toward the future. The thrum of the rhythm promises everything to you and will soon blossom into reality. You've gained a large amount of air mastery. Ooh, okay. Then, after a time, you hear the voice. At first, you did not know, well, know that there was a voice, only a strange sensation unfolding in your mind, a soothing warmth, pulses of orange color and the comforting taste of brimstone on your tongue. How do I know how brimstone feels if I'm not even alive? Like, like I, I'm not even born. Anyway, weird. And yet, you are alone here in the chamber. Could there be something outside? You reach out, forming a colored echo in your thoughts and sending it beyond your reality. And you are rewarded with an explosion of pure joy ringing through your essence and echoing to your mind. In time, you learn the differences between the emotions, the colors of the mind, that the voice outside the wall would pour into you through its mind song and which you could pour back and so you discover happiness and sadness, anger and calm, fear and curiosity as an innumerable, um, innumerable, innumerable spectrum of others. And then the, image, the images come, pictures etched in neon relief in your mind by the song of the voice. There are images of amazing beings, the stately tree, an honorable, reliable stone, of chattering stream and murmuring sea, and of the great giver, who is also called sun, and of the great birther, who receives from sun and gives birth to all things, who is also called earth. Earth and sun are the greatest of beasts, mightiest of all the animals, but next to them in might are your people, the true children of above and below, the kin unto each other, who are also called Drac, well, Dragon. The voice then asks you a question, wait. Oh, tiny kin yet to be, which shall you become? Sun, the radiant one, the great giver? Who rules and slays and is slain and reborn each day, or Earth, who circle dances to sun's music, who nurtures peaceful and omnipotent, births all good beasts, knows all silent secrets and abides forever. Let's see. For me is the power and the glory and the rise and the fall both. I wish to be sun. For me is the knowing and the healing and the dance of the circle. I wish to be Earth. Well, if we are a dragon, I'd rather be Earth. Because that's where life exists, not on the sun. The voice responds by singing a vision 
and feeling of cool, damp earth pregnant with green life into you. On this path lies a power, hidden but great, may you find a deeper peace amidst the violence of existence. You have gained a large amount of earth mastery. Time has little meaning in the chamber, marked only by the rhythm within you. The wall also seems to embrace you just a little more closely with each moment. Yeah, because we're growing. The voice from outside leaves and returns again and again, continuing to instruct you gently and at a slow pace, ensuring that you can receive its song and build yourself around it. It teaches you of the many good beasts, those of fur and scale and feather and fen. Some are swift, like the hopping long ear, uh, long ear and some are powerful, like the horn grazers. But all are good and all have their own music. Most importantly, it teaches you the two great laws. First, you are a destroyer. To live is good, and you may only preserve your life by tearing away the life of others. I'm guessing that's, that will be feeding. You must destroy. Find that which calls, you to, uh, calls to you and destroy it, and take it into yourself and grow mighty. If you fail to destroy, you will waste away and be yourself destroyed, and all your music will become silence. Second, that you are a creator. All creators are one of two kinds. Givers, who give of their essence during the dance of creation, or birthers, who receive the essence and weave new life from it, bringing it forth in the fullest of time. Wait, so you're telling me there are only two genders for dragons? That's, that's a little, you know, that's a little uh, transphobic for this type of day and in your... When you have grown great, you must seek out another who is also great and of opposite nature and through the dance of creation become a source of the future. If you fail to do this, the destiny of the children of heaven and earth will waste away and where there might have been uh, the echo of your music in the time beyond yourself, there will be only silence. And so it is, was and shall be. So you have to feed and procreate, you know. Wait, 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 what? There is a brief silence during which you sense that there is a space enough for one question. What do you do? I ask how to best consume the essence of others. I asked if the voice is my creator. Was it one of the two who dance, uh, of the two who dance created me? I ask how to do the dance of creation. That's that's a little later to find out. I ask whether it is possible to live without destroying others. I quietly consider these uh, these deep within myself and saw no answers from the voice. I don't. Know, let, let us ask this. Th this. I ask if the voice is my creator. Was it one of the two who dance created me? Indeed, affirms the voice, and you can tell the spring-colored memory of the tender and violent dance which created you, uh, which created you lives in its mind. I am a source of your being, and so you must and shall walk in my ways. My truths are inscribed um, upon your essence, and you in your turn shall pass yours unto others, but only if you are strong and worthy. So this would be my father, I guess? You gain some earth mastery, water mastery and air mastery. Beyond the two great laws, sings the voice, there is one lesser law. It is not great. If you violate it, you shall not be destroyed. Nevertheless, taste this truth and chain it within your mind. You must seek treasure. Treasure comes in many kind. But you will know it when you find it. Treasure is something rare and of worth to all the true children of heaven and earth. By taking treasure as your own, you shall prove your greatness to other kin. So that's why dragons have, you know, steel, gold and stuff, because they, they want to impress their mates. And, you know, potential mates. Whether obtained by strength of body or of mind, or any other thing, it matters not. All that matters is that you must gather all treasures to yourself, 
Some are obvious but well guarded, and some require little strength but are different, difficult to find. None, though, are both obvious and easily obtained, or they would not be treasure. Let's see, what should we ask? If I do not need it to survive, why must I seek treasure? What is the great? Oh, that's a good question. What is the greatest treasure? You can tell from the cer cerulean tinge in its song that the voice is pleased with such an ambitious question, but the song which comes back is circuitous and uncertain. While some treasures are surely greater than others, no one treasure has yet been sung off by the kin as the greatest of all. Okay, so there's there are many treasures, it's just... right. There was once a kin who gathered so much of, uh, of one of the elements of reality that the elements ceased to exist uh, at all outside of the kin's lair. Oh, what did it steal? Well, gather, sorry. There was once a kin who found a world great and varied of our own but as tiny as the seed of the smallest flower and sealed it in a container which whispered great and mighty secrets in the form of thousands of histories of land beneath the, the notice of even the smallest insect. It, you know, the, the lines need to be a little, you know, uh, the sentence needs to be shorter I think, it's a bit too much. There was once a kin who discovered the deepest truths of growth and grew so fast that Sun, the great giver, took notice and sang down to it with a holy song never heard before or since. And even these were not the greatest treasure. Perhaps it does not exist, or perhaps you at last shall be the kin to find the greatest of treasures. Well, maybe. You gain some fiery mastery, water, and air mastery. That should be good, right? The voice's song grows softer. Now I leave you, my kin, and my creation. You may never hear my song again, nor I yours. I have imparted the two great laws, as is my duty. You are a destroyer, and you are a creator, and these truths are woven into you like warmth uh, into blessed flame. If you cease to be a destroyer or creator, you would no longer be kin. And you, uh, and you know of the lesser law, the seeking and taking of treasure. Through, uh, though you may survive and well fed and strong of body, if you have no treasure, you will never be called great among the kin. You will never know the pleasure of the dance of creation and your creator self will languish in a frigid world. All other laws are false. These alone bind us. Remember that you are Draken, and other beings of this world must stand in the shadow of your beautiful and terrible music. The rhythm which you feel now flowing through you is the rhythm of life. You have the rhythm within you. Uh, well, you have the rhythm within you is to be alive. Oh, to, sorry, to have the rhythm with you is to be alive. To be silent without the rhythm is the perfect sign of death. Nature shall now be your guide, companion and opponent, your friend, enemy, and always, always your teacher. There is no being born of earth, the great birther and the sun, the great giver, greater than you. The music of our people is great. Rejoice! knowing that your essence has been woven into such a body and that such a fate is yours. When you at last escape from the wall which I have put around you, both to keep you safe and to test you, then you'll be worthy to begin the great adventure which some call life. And with that final message, the idea of yourself exploding from potentiality into reality, the voice fades and is gone. You know that it will not return. How do you feel in that moment? Relieved to be alone, excited to begin the mysterious journey ahead, abandoned by my creator, admiration for my creator. No, I'm excited, I'm excited to be born already. You're eager to show the world how great you are, how much greater you shall become. You dance a tiny, tiny dance within the confines of the chamber and sing raw, pure songs of hope and longing into the nothingness beyond the wall. 
fire mastery, water and air mastery, okay? For a time, you are left alone again within the chamber. You feel the measured beating of your rhythm within you and drift in and out of consciousness. The wall seems to have gotten smaller, hugging you tightly indeed. Your rhythm has swelled into mighty chords um, and your breath is fierce against your legs. Suddenly, and without warning, the voice returns. It is not a measured song rife with order sigils at, as last time, but a luring gash of feelings and ideas suddenly thrust upon you. Beware the other seed, the no tails, the flat faces, beware the terrible music, beware the seed of the others, beware. No tails, the flat faces, humans maybe? And suddenly there is an awful silence. A space left behind where something should have been. No other voices enter your mind. A few times you think you may be receiving a song, but it always proves to be simply yourself echoing tiny hopes, fears and dreams. Meanwhile, the wall, the wall which is made of love and which has always, always embraced you, is squeezing you very tightly. Its love, once so pure and benign, has become toxic. You are pressed so mercilessly you can barely breathe, and to make matters worse you feel a horrible emptiness, a draining within your core. You must do something. Be no, push against the wall. It loves you, you know, but um, it now must be broken. You push and struggle, feeling your body move this way, then that and the wall towards your every move on every side. It is not through pushing, but rather to unfolding your whole self, limb by limb and muscle by muscle, that you, are at la uh, that you at last achieve the first true success in the music of your life. You hear, not with your mind, but with your ears, your actual ears, the cracking and crunching of the wall as it breaks slowly apart, and then see with your own eyes your first vision of true light. Fire in mastery and air mastery. Yes! It's breaking! The eggshell is breaking! The drakkin lives! Right? Part 1 for the structure that we raise, time is with materials filled. Our todays and yesterdays are the blocks with which we build. Thus alone can we attain of those turrets where the eye sees the world as one vast plain and one boundless reach of sky. The Builders. Look at that. Wow, they're pretty big. You are somewhere inside the body of Earth, the Great Birther. Her semi-soft flesh is vain here and there with the grasping roots of trees or blockaded by stones who stare blindly at you. The air here tastes of comfort and slumber and your own body feels as though it is in good condition. But you feel a burning in your core. You know that it is the destroyer within, eager for substance to fuel your uh, being. Oh, I'm hungry. If you fail to find anything to destroy, the emptiness will overtake you and your life will be lost. You sense nothing to consume here though. A few illumin illuminating rays tumble in from above, but your vision is still dim and unsteady. Perhaps you could leave this place by crawling up the tangle of fruits overhead. Whenever you consider a task which you will alone which which you will alone cannot conquer, you will get a sense of whether you will succeed or fail based on your elemental attributes. Climbing up the roots would require a certain amount of fluidity and flexibility which are the domain of the water element. Red indicates that you cannot succeed, at least not without problems in your current state, while green indicates you feel, uh, you're feeling that you certainly can. Yellow means that it is too close to be sure. You may or may not succeed. Right. So that's, you know, if I'm going to do anything, that's going to be an indication of the success potential of my action. 
As you make choices, your health and energy will be affected as well. Success brings benefits, but be not too afraid of failure. Through it, all beings learn and grow strong, while success has little to teach. Now, choose, newborn. Uh, what will you do? Examine what is left of the wall. Claw your way to the hard earth downwards in the direction of Earth's embrace. No, I wouldn't go down, right? I, I need to go up. I need to exit the, the, well, the nest, I guess. Claw your way to the softer soil. Use your limbs and jaws to climb directly up the hanging roots. Let's examine what's left of the wall. The chamber of your creation seems so small now. Moments ago it was your entire reality. Perhaps there is another reality beyond this one you now see into which you will be one hatch. One day, so you will one day hatch. Have you, uh, have you any further business with the wall? Mm, mm, leave the wall. Uh, you have uh, grown beyond the wall and have no further use of it. You allow Earth to reclaim it. So the wall would be what the, I guess the shell. So let's uh, let's go up. Claw your way to the hard earth. No, sorry, no. C claw your way to the softer soil. Yes, sidewards and upwards. Yes, that one. Your small but powerful limbs tear through earth's flesh. It is an effort, but you succeed in crafting a small rough tunnel large enough to fit your body through. More light spills into the burrow as you emerge out of the ground, shaking your body clean. You have lost a little energy. Hey, we're out, kinda. This space is much larger than last, and though you are still sheltered by Earth's body, light is more plentiful here, and you may be approaching her skin. A clean azure flavor slides across your tongue. Water, the comforter and supporter of all life, is here, gathered into a still body before you. Something within you resonates with it drawing you towards it what is your will draw closer to the water or leave this place behind uh, let's let's check the water you move closer oh that's me very colorful and for the first time you see yourself your body sculpted and painted by time and space is almost beyond description your armor shines subtly, uh, subtly, uh, with the earth, uh, oh, sorry, Earth's rich hues, while the promise of precious things, like the promise of precious things, buried deep. Your feathers, each one dried with more, uh, dyed with more color than you know the names of, long for the touch of air, and you are crowned with plumes so that all other good beasts may know your sovereignty. Your long neck, graceful limbs and subtle tail transform every motion into a weaving cascade of flowing movement. Seeing your true form, what? For the first time you feel surprised, afraid, proud or peaceful. Peaceful! Peaceful to see myself as a living creature. Deep within your mind, you knew the truth of what you were, even when you were in the chamber. Yes, this is reality. I am dragon, like that. Or dragon I am. We be dragons, yes. This is the body into which your essence has been woven. These are the limbs with which you will walk the path uh, the path of this life. The teeth and claws with which you will uh, meet out the judgment of destruction upon other beings. This is the fruit of your creators. And this is the body whose legacy may be bequeathed to others if you survive long enough and are found worthy. This is yourself. You are content. Ooh, got some earth mastery. What is your will? Consume some of the water. Leave the place. No, let's let's drink some water, right? Oh, see, nice. Yes. You lower your mouth. So we got some energy, I guess. You lower your mouth to the body of the water and use your tongue to take some of it into you. It flows pleasantly down, trickling to your core, relieving you of a little of the emptiness within and soothing your essence. You've gained, see, we've got a little, a little bit of energy from the water, nice. 
Water's reputation as a friend to all life is apparently well deserved. Your core demands something which water alone cannot slake, though. Meat. Fresh meat. With nothing else to do within this space, you follow the whispering air and light outward. Let's move out. Life. Huh? The great beyond. Now that you have emerged from the great mother's flesh, you can see her more completely and her power and beauty are be beyond, beyond your wildest hope. The trees are her feathers and the mountains her spine. Her breath is the wind and her essence flows in streams, rivers and the distant sea. Above you, the sun, the great giver shines its own endless essence down upon earth. He blazes above you, mighty in his glory, beautiful and shameless in his circle dance of creation by which all that carries the rhythm of life is ultimately begotten. The air between them is sweet with life and light, the fruits of their union. The wind blows, teasing your wings. A wild desire to tread the air, to rise above, fills you. Hmm, should we embrace the wind and fly? Or know your limitations, climb down from, a, from the promo promotory safe. Well, I don't know if I'm ready to fly. So let's climb down, because I don't think the dragon is ready to fly. I mean, it should be too early, right? One day, you know deep in your core, you will travel the unbounded paths above, but your wings are too small, uh, too small yet to, be, uh, to bear you aloft. Wisely, you accept that some things come only with time. And arrive at the base of the cliff unhurt. Okay, so I, I would have gotten myself really, really injured if, if I try to fly. We got some earth and water mastery. Nice. Huh. The crow. As you climb down the last few stones from the promo promontory, and arrive in the lightly wooden valley below, some kind of small flying beast calls out to you from a nearby tree. It stands out against its surroundings in bold black and white. It is a white black. One, uh, one of the people known for their cleverness, ruthlessness and fondness of shiny objects. It's a crow, well kind of a crow. It la laughs at you and mocks you with a denigrating song. The mighty dragon once ruled over all things. Now they dare not even use their own wings. Doomed by cowardice, they lurk in damp caves, grasping their wealth, seeking out golden graves. Of this land, you may become sovereign lord, but be not too proud of your great shining hoard. While my people grow mighty in number and fame, of your of your weak, broken tribe, few indeed yet remain. How will you respond? Reply with a mockery song of your own? Endure the mockery calmly, attempt to get it to divulge a secret, or attack the insolent white back? Well, if I try to attack, it's probably gonna run away. So, let's... Uh... Is that green? Yeah, that looks like green. Right? Yeah, let's... Uh... Let's fight back. Let's uh, let's troll the the uh, the first troll we found. You attempt to reply, but your mastery of the mind song of the kin is still lacking. The images and concepts which you project into the white back's consciousness are half formed and lacking substance. Oh, you know what? That's right. I shouldn't try to just you know make up stuff when I I'm barely alive. Yeah. You artist. So artist are you? So. Fresh from the shell, that even such things you cannot do well. I would shame myself if my uh, if my skills I, I employ upon what uh, upon one the no tails soon shall destroy. Shame uh, gnaws at you as it wings away, but you have learned the value of skill in song, and your bond with air is strengthened. Really? So did I get some air mastery? Okay, I did. At least I tried, right? I guess. 
Moving on, you allow the hillside to guide you downward. You have been following the path of a swift running river for some time when you are struck by a powerful scent. Flicking your tongue out, you taste the sacred essence of one of the kin on the breeze, floating on twin wings of pain and decay. There is another flavor as well, something strange, something animal but not, something other. You shudder, your feathers raising upwards involuntarily. What could these strange scents mean? The kin whose scent you now smell could possibly explain, but you are now hatched and beyond the chamber all kin are rivals, seldom welcoming the scent of other drak in their territory. Yeah, so maybe I shouldn't go towards another dragon. Still, there is something familiar in that scent, something which tugs at the corners of your mind. Stealing yourself, uh, you carefully draw closer to its source. Oh! It's the humans, they captured the dragon. Destruction. The horrible stillness of a body empty of spirit. Oh, it's dead! No. Oh. The noble red essence of a great kin, shed not in, t in a true dance of destruction, but trapped, tortured. The confusion, the pain, or maybe it's not dead yet, at least. In the synergy between its scent and yours, you know without doubt, this was the great being who instructed you as the voice. This was one of your creators. Aww, so that was my mom or dad. Its rhythm is now silenced, its songs forever stilled. Already tiny spirits of decay infest the vast body, feeding off it, reducing it to void. Something is cl uh, clawing at you from within, straining at your heart bone and flooding your mind. Fear and rage uh, and sh uh, shuddering nausea overtake you one after another, growing and ridden within. You feel yourself instinctively uh, belch fire seed into the back of your throat, only just managing to swallow it, to swallow it again, denying it a chance to explode into a searing flame to consume the things which now sing and dance near the ruins of one who created you. The things. What are they? There is something wrong with them. Something very, very wrong. They seem to have more than one skin, some of them belonging to other animals. The brightness of their body heat is darkened by the cold, dead hides they cover themselves with. There is something strange about their oily scent. Something familiar, but alongside that something completely other, like no true animal. They clutch strange things in their forepaws, which you cannot identify, though they reek of the blood of trees. Uh, because they're made of wood. But most horrifyingly, they have no tails. They are the tailless. You are split, wait, split inside, the air with you screaming to run away as fast as you can uh, from this place, and the fire within you urging to destroy these no tails. Decide, quickly! Destroy... Flee from this place of destruction... Well, I don't think I can destroy them, because they're a lot and I just was just born. So let's let's run away. You flow rapidly through the underbrush, underbrush, underbrush scrambling over rotten, rotting tree corpses and crashing through shrubs until there is no trace of either scent or sound of the no-tails. I mean, I, I bet I am going to meet the no-tails again. Now is not the time, though. They seem to possess some kind of terrible magic which allows them to cause harm even from far away. Again, this seems wrong beyond all possible definition of the word. It is not all order in the world... Uh, it is not all order in the world dependent on simple fairness or having to destroy your enemies with your own body. Perhaps the bizarre, bizarre things are beyond your ability to deal with as a hatchling. You resolve to, let's see, grow stronger so that you can bring destruction to them and their misshapen kind. Avoid the notice at all costs, keeping safety away. Attend to learn and imitate their strange magic. No, grow stronger so I can kill them all. You allow the hater to become a searing promise within your core. One day, 
you shall grow great enough to defeat their uh, otherworldly magic. Then you will finally be able to put this terrible fear which gnaws at your mind to rest. Uh, you have gained a large amount of fire mastery. Oh, okay. What? You feel something small striking your armor. You turn to see what it is and find nothing. But then it happens again. And again. It's not painful, but it is annoying. Oh, it's rain! Eventually you realize that it must be rain. The sacred water of the sky which sometimes fall to bless the Great Mother. Of which you were told while you were in the chamber. Soon, rain is falling everywhere. Tumbling and vaulting off of leaves and sliding merrily down the grass. It makes it hard to smell and taste the air and perturbs you as it splatters against your armor. You find shelter in what used to be the den of a family of fur beasts. Their scents, scent lingers only on the edge of your consciousness and they must have been gone for many suns or even moons. You dig it slightly deeper and broader it, broader it with your claws and then settle in Watching rain downward, watching rains downward dive. So I need to drink something because it's, it's so much text. Not, not the bad thing, it's just a lot. Yes, this should suffice for now. Surely, grander layers await you in the future, but you feel comfortable and safe in Earth's body. At last, you have a moment to think. You pause, considering your situation. A moment of reflection will make your current feelings and thoughts clear. Awareness of one's own state of being is key to survival in this harsh and beautiful world. So let's see. No trace of no tails can be smelled near your den. Explore the valley, find treasures and seek the entrance to the great green. Your body is pristine, you are in perfect health. You're hungry. Okay, so I'm hungry, but I'm safe. Okay. You may also draw your thoughts towards any treasure or artifacts you have found. Uh, you currently have no treasures of any kind. There is little there now, but if you survive uh, and are bold yet wise, you will gather many. Perhaps some will even have strange and uh, wondrous powers. Ooh, some artifacts maybe. Here, you can recall the many denizens of the Great Green you will meet. As you explore, hunt and survive, your knowledge of each of the many tribes and people of good beasts will grow and their secrets will be revealed to you. So these are all the, the creatures that you encounter. Wow, that's a lot of creatures! Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 times 4 for 39. Wow, that's a lot of creatures. And if you wish to leave the waking dream of this life and return to your other reality, like, you know, the menu, I guess. Right. Uh, you can, okay. Your relationship with the great four, the elements which make up reality, will be your key to survival. At any time, you may draw your thoughts towards the elements to more clearly comprehend their gifts. Each element bears a sigil which will grow and change as you gather more of the infinite truths of the world to yourself and each governs a different aspect of your abilities. The fire element governs your physical strength and ferocity as well as the power of your fiery breath. The water element governs your perception, empathy, flexibility and stealth. The earth element governs endurance, health and fortitude. The more you understand and, in and imitate this element, the more patient and difficult to destroy you will become. The air element governs quickness and intellect. Agility of both body and mind belong to the sphere. So it's it's strength. Uh, what agility? No, uh, no, this would be agility. No, this would be like intellect, agility, and and health, kinda. As you grow in understanding the experience, your degree of enlightenment within the four elements will increase. So you can increase your stats basically. 
Each degree brings gifts. By recalling each specific element, you can re remember which gifts you have earned and what temporary factors such as injuries may be affecting it. Earning gifts is not affected by temporary effects and only when your natural level of enlightenment is high enough will you gain new abilities. Already your actions and decisions have straightened your connections and granted you certain advantages, such as You have achieved the first grade of mastery in the fiery element. You may now use Power Strike, a physical attack which deals heavy damage if you win. What? Oh, come on. Uh, you can now use Flowing Strike, a water technique which does light physical damage and may do additional damage based on the enemy's fire attribute. You may now Brace in Combat, which does not harm your opponent but greatly reduces incoming damage. So that's kind of like a, that's an offensive move movement. That's interesting. And here, Swift Strike, a clawing air attack which deals light physical damage and may harm your opponent before it has a chance to harm you. Huh. So maybe like bleed, something like that. There are many ways to increase these masteries, such as learning secrets, observing nature, and imitating the qualities of the elements. By making choices and discovering new things, you will grow in your understanding of the elements of reality. Remember that failure is a far better teacher than success. Mistakes and losses bring with them uh, the best lessons. If you lose a challenge, you may suffer in the short term, but your elemental abilities are likely to increase. Certain treasures and gifts may also affect your elemental abilities. This cozy nook is a good place to rest. If your body has been damaged, Damaged, it will slowly mend on its own, but spending the sun resting here will greatly increase the speed at which you recover. A few scratches will not hinder you, but any significant wound will impact your ability to hunt, to fight, and even to think clearly. The rain has passed and the great above has cleared, but the world is darkening. Night must be approaching. You slip out of your den to investigate. Whoa. That's, that looks lovely. You emerge in time to see your first sun ending, and as he dies in scarred glory, new, smaller illuminations are born in the opposite corner of the sky. By the time sun has gone completely, they dominate the great above, a parade of holy light marching in a slow circle dance. You are taught of the stars while still in the chamber, but seeing them with your own eyes is uh, with your own eyes is a true wonder. Each of the stars has a color and a brightness not quite any other. Some are red as the body of fire, some green as the uh, grasses of earth, some blue as the depths of water, some white as the clouds of the air. Some stand quietly, firm in their color, and some sparkle and flash, shimmering gaily. Even in the great above, the four sacred elements hold their being. A cool wind blows over you, ruffling your feathers, inspiration is striking. You feel compelled to let your voice ring out in song. What shall you sing? Let's see, sing a great hymn uh, to fire, air, water, earth, sing a lesser hymn to all of them. Now let's go for, um, let's increase um, let's increase. W yeah, let's let's use him of water, to water, because that that I think I need to increase that stat. Of the greatness of water, I sing. That which flows through and uh, through and over and around, that which nor uh, nourishes all beings. I sing of the clear water, milk of the great birther, every stream and pond and creek, a well of health and life. I sing of the crimson water, where flows of rhythm of life within, its waves and tides shaping the sacred body and those of all my relations, fueling the senses and bringing healing and emotion. I sing of the hidden water, the flow of that which is unseen, Mystery and magic beyond the hunting grounds of the body and the mind. I am a mighty river flowing over all land. Many may, uh, 
may many beings find their source in me. May I serve as the beginning to innumerable endings. May I create wonders in my wake, springing up like trees and green things. May my gentle passage shatter stone and carve valleys. Praise to water, who teaches us that the soft overcomes the hard, who teaches us to embrace earth, who births all that has the rhythm of life. Praise the water, which is, was, and shall be. As you listen to the echo of your roaring so sound, song returning to you from the farthest corner of the valley, your tail curls with happiness. Your life will be the cause of many new beginnings, in ways subtle and obvious, clear and mysterious. But of course I'm also going to kill stuff, so I'm also, I'm also going to end things, but yeah. Uh, you will leave this world changed by your presence, and it will bear your mark forever, even when you are gone. This valley was uh, wrought by ancient waters, you shall bring, ab bring about even greater things. See? We got a large amount of water mastery. Good! Let's see. Can I see my stats? Flowing strike. Okay. Okay. Your first sun is at an end. And it was more than you could have imagined. Even with your creator's instruction. Sleeping in your lair is almost like being back in the chamber. But now you know too much. Your mind wanders uh, from uh, thought to thought, seeking to guide itself. Your hopes and fears toss you back and forth, uh, scraping, your un uh, scraping you uncomfortably between what was and what might have been. You see your creator lying silent before the no tails, their chattering, screeching voices barking something incompre incomprehensible as the red kin essence spreads along the ground. The witch back, uh, sorry, the white back, not witch back, white back mocks you as you look on. You feel the dread one to stomping of the, of, of the tailless near you, upon you, over you. The, these are the, you know, the people, you know, throwing, throwing spears at my father or mother. You slide underneath the mountains to hide from them, but there are tailless everywhere. Smaller and stone-skinned underground, tall and willery in the woods, coarse and shouting in the flatlands. It is not your precious essence they seek to shed, however. They are roaring for the flesh of something else. Something older and more powerful than even a great kin. You wake briefly and your second sleep is far less troubled. Oh, my first nightmare. Oh, the first... Well, I guess sunrise. A new sun dawns, climbing laboriously over the mountains. Today, you must emerge and seek your destiny. As you do, you may encounter many new things. You have not yet used your body to hunt and fight, nor have you ventured far from this makeshift den. Do you wish to learn of these things in death, or do you wish to dive uh, headlong into your destiny without such lessons? Uh, let's uh, let's learn how to hunt. Yeah. Um, the the water which fell from the sky prevented you from fulfilling your mission of destruction, and your core cries out of uh, out for flesh. Perhaps a hunt would be wise. Yes, it is. However, it's also tempting to explore more of this beautiful world in which you find yourself. Exploring your territory will reveal new opportunities, challenges, treasures, hunting grounds, and more. How will you spend this, your second son? Let's, uh, let, let's, let's learn how to explore first, actually. Because that may help with, with exploring to, with, with, you know, with finding food. This is the area you have already explored. This is your lair. You can always find your way back here. This is where you found the tailless slain kin. There is nothing there now, and returning would be pointless, so it is darkened and inert. Still, you will carry the place where it happened in your memory. A color sigil marks an area in which you can spend the sun hunting if you wish, and indicates that prey, uh, what prey you can mostly, most easily find there. But beware, 
beware, too much hunting in one place will drive away the residents. <laughs> yeah, of course you can kill everything. A green sigil indicates a healthy and plentiful hunting ground, while red means the area is almost empty, with yellow between. Hunting grounds recover with time, but once completely depleted, they remain fallow and dead, so you can't overhunt. A wise predator hunts in diverse locations, allowing the local good beasts to recover. Otherwise, they prey, the, the, the prey will leave and the valley may become a flesh-barred flesh wasteland. Oh, uh, it is thought the act of exploration that new locations, encounters and hunting grounds may be found. It is true, the act of exploration. You may only explore an area which is n uh, near another which you have already explored. Right. You know, can't just, you know, jump all the way to the other part, other, you know, end of the, of the land. Exploring a new area takes all sun, so one day, but at least one point of interest would always be discovered, and often more. Go, and do not be afraid. Encountering new things is the basis of strength. Okay, so I can go here. So I can hunt here, this is my lair, and let's explore this place, yeah. Maybe I can find some new hunting grounds and I can, you know, switch between, you know, multiple. Ah, see? Hunting ground there. Um, you have uh, uncovered a beautiful meadow. There, the grasses grow high, sheltering all manner of good beasts. White sigils mark the places where you have found an interesting scent. These unique locations may harbor treasure, special encounters, or unknown dangers. This scent is especially powerful and has a familiar tang which strongly piques your interest. On another sun, when you are well fed and rested, you, shall cert you should certainly investigate. It may bring uh, well or woe, but so long as you survive, you will grow both within uh, and without. So I'm guessing that's that's how you progress. Those are like the progression missions or events. Oh, a new day? Okay, I guess. Or night time comes. Uh, Alright, okay. So... Okay, so we explored and now let's uh, let's hunt. Let's learn how to hunt. Spend the day hunting. The wood just outside your den seemed uh, replete with the presence of lesser good beasts. It should not take long to find one. Ah yes, there is one of the small furry beasts who sent calls to you. The kin call it a tree tail. In honor of its close relationship with trees and its luxurious expressive tail. It is small. But it will do. Oh, it's like a, a chipmunk. Well, uh, you know. Understanding the music of your partner in the dance is vital. Being by examining the tree tail more closely. Begin, sorry, begin by examining it. Okay. Any good beast such as you can easily sense how much fire there is in the essence of another. Fire influences strength. Sorry, if this is might and how dangerous an opponent will be in the dance of destruction, which some call combat. If they are strong in this element, beware. You may catch them, only to find that they are quite capable of destroying you instead. As you can see, this is not a great concern when it comes to tree tails, as the gem is empty and not even a small part of the sigil of fire is shown. So they're, they're weak in strength, that's, that's what it means. This is your opponent's water affinity. The more complex the water sigil, the keener the prey sense, and the more difficult they will be to approach without discovery. The earth sphere represents health and resilience. A being strong in this element will not easily surrender its essence. Great effort will surely be required to bring something great and earth to destruction. But it's weak in that regard. Beings with high earth also possess a strong will, and so uh, so even and so even indirect attempts to harm one will fail unless the attacking element is even higher. Once again, tree tails compared to others to other larger prey are not very difficult to bring down at all, provided you can get your claws on them. And this is your opponent's air affinity. 
Note that it seems to have a little mastery in it, indicating that it is slightly quick. Compare it with your own air ability to see how difficult it would be to chase. Okay, how do I do that? I mean, I can't click. Prey with high air affinity may may all uh, may be all but impossible to chase down, and must be defeated by other means. Although you can sense roughly how attuned to each element a being may be and where their strengths lie, strengths lie, only by testing your abilities directly against them can you be sure of their skills. Right, that's the best way to learn to actually fight them or you know hunt them. Be aware that many beings possess special abilities which allow them to survive upon Earth. Tree tails, for example, have the ability to climb, and so attempts to pursue them from uh, far away will automatically fail. They will be able to reach a tree and scurry to safety. Only attempt to chase them after approaching as near as you can. A good way to begin a hunt is by stalking your prey, silently attempting to draw as close as you can without being noticed. A water, the water element which governs the senses is your greatest asset here. See, that's why I sang, to, uh, that was a good thing, you know, S singing that hymn to, the, to, to, to water. The more powerful your connection to that element, the more silently you can move. Mm, yes, I like stealth. Size also plays a role in stalking. If you are larger than your prey, you will be at a disadvantage, and if smaller, at an advantage. Your prey has surely developed keen senses uh, on its, of its own in order to avoid destruction by predators such as you. To successfully close the distance without alerting, your, alerting it, your water mastery must be greater than the tree tails. This one smells old and weak, ripe for consumption. It is time to put your skills to the test. Alright, we're gonna draw closer to it. Ah yes, you are now much closer. Close enough to smell its fur, its personal scent, even its nut-tinted breath. Ew. Charging at it now is tempting, but you also find yourself fascinated as you watch, its, uh, watch it forage for food. It moves in a particular way, not quite like that of any other good beast. And in observing it, you may learn something. Yeah, let's observe. Yes. Already you are learning. Nature is an excellent teacher. So what did I learn? Let's see. The Fool, part one. Embrace the wind before you're ready. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. So what did we learn? Did I... Oh, that's halfway through. That's interesting. Oh. Oh, wait, we have two things here. Bite and embrace. Uh, sorry, embrace. Two abilities here. Flowing strike. Okay. Okay. If you hunt and observe each prey enough, you may gain a glimpse of their deeper truth and in finding it, incorporate it to your own way uh, and become stronger. But you have sensed enough your hunger for its tender flesh and thirst for its crimson essence. If you strike now, you might succeed in the chase, but perhaps you could draw even closer. Yes, let's try. So near, so near now, and your prey is still completely ignorant of the shadow of destruction with, which falls upon it. If you strike at it with all your speed and strength, it will not stand a chance. Wait for the two uh, circles to become one and then act quickly. Okay. Strike! Did it work? The hapless tree, tree tail barely even has time to realize that you are there before you crunch its small bones in, into your jaws, tasting its perfect essence as you crush it several times and finally swallow it. Well, that's a little bit... Well, it's a little bit graphic. Its flesh and its spirit will now become part of your own, granting you precious energy, which would be this line, right? You feel pride in your own skill and gratitude to the tree tail in equal measure. This is right. This is the way of all things. Yes, we gain some energy. Nice. Ah, another one. Your, cur your core urges you on. You must have more. If you are to grow great. The last one was old and weak. 
its senses dull, but not this one. Destroying it will be a, more of a challenge. A chase at this range against an animal which can climb trees is hopeless. Draw near as before. Oh, you managed to draw near, but although you remain hidden in the tall grass, your prey has heard rumor of you approach from a rather noisy twig you stepped on. It is now suspicious of you. Hmm, really now? All is not lost, however. Perhaps if you remain still and observe, there is a chance that the tree tail will lower its guard. Yes, let's let's shut up. Let's be let's be very very quiet. We're hunting uh, tree tails. <laughs> Sorry. You have waited for a few precious moments, but the tree tail still suspects that danger may be near. That danger may be near. When you wait and observe an opponent whose suspicion has been aroused, there is a chance that it will return to its way each time, but it's it's not guaranteed. Each, in, it, each individual animal is different, and fortune plays a role. If you just wait a little longer... Yes! There! It seems satisfied that it is no, not in danger, and, has, uh, and it has lowered its guard again. Any movement from you while it was suspicious would surely have caused it to flee. Waiting silently when your prey becomes suspicious may cause it to relax in time but beware each moment that passes brings your scent closer to it in the wind on the winds and once it smells you it will surely try to escape you must stalk your prey quietly yet quickly before your scent is caught so you can't just stay too long right to to stalk them this treetail uh scent these treetail scents are obviously keener than the last it draws this close, if drawing this close made it suspicious, trying to draw even closer will surely alert it. If your prey begins to chase the chase, you will be at a disadvantage, so you must now seize the initiative and attack. The surprise should give you the few precious instants that you need. Strike! It notices you and flees! Chase it! Alright, click the tree tail repeatedly. Oh, the tree tail is trying to evade, what? Oh, oh, no, go. Eh, slash, yes. Oh, that's really cute, you have to um, yeah, go go like that. The chasing is kind of cute. As you feel the um, luscious body of yet another tree, uh, tree tail move slowly down your craw, the joy of pure, wholesome destruction again sinks in. This is the dance of destruction. The fight for survival which all beings dance with each other and it is good it is as it should and must be and we got some more energy nice you no longer ache for sus substance your core mostly quieted there is however room for one more you may hunt up to three times per sun in an abundant hunting ground fewer prey exist in a middling or sparse area Sun and Earth have blessed you. You have discovered a wounded member of the delicious long, long year tribe. Oh, it's a bunny. Oh, we're actually hunting rabbits. Nice. Normally, you would have to stalk and pursue it, which is uh, no mean feat, as long ears have swift feet and keep keen senses, senses. However, this one is sporting a broken leg. It senses you, but it cannot flee. Yes, well, you're dead. Let combat the two dance of destruction begin. Oh, wait, 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 we're actually gonna fight a rabbit? Ah, the true dance of destruction. Though your foe is not the most powerful of beasts, you cannot help but shiver a little. Both of you are uh, um, w wagering, wagering life, the most precious of treasures, against the skill of the other. Like most aspects of life, fighting is ruled by the elements. Begin by examining both your, current, your own current mastery and those of your opponent. Okay, so I have Burning Breath and Power Strike, Flowing Strike, Bite and Brace, and Swift Strike. Oops, sorry. While the Wabbit... Well, okay, so the Wabbit is quite powerful when it comes to... Okay, it doesn't have a lot of health and a lot of strength. Alright. 
The element of fire is one of the two elements which rule over combat. As the element of strength and power, all physical damage done is based on mastery of fire. Which I'm a lot better at than the hair. This particular long ear is much weaker than most of its kind due to its broken leg. Do not expect long ears to be this feeble in the future. The other, other element which is crucial in the dance of destruction is earth. As the element of fortitude and endurance, earth dictates how much damage a creature can endure, and I'm, I'm tougher than it. All actions taken in combat are associated with a particular element. A simple biting attack, for example, is of the earth element, while your burning breath is, of course, a fire attack. When you select an action, your opponent does as well, and then both of them clash together. Certain elements have advantages over others. Water is strong against fire. Okay, so wait, it's, uh, so it's fire, air, and water. Okay, so it's a uh, like tic tac toe type of thing. Well, sorry, yeah, you you know what I mean. It's like a um, rock paper scissors. That's that's the thing. Sorry, tic tac toe. What what am I thinking? So water is strong against fire, fire rules over air, and air defeats water. Earth has neither advantage nor disadvantage against others. Each good beast uh, has a way which gives it certain options and a set pattern of attack. Long ears, for example, would always use a repeating earth, water, air pattern. Earth, earth, sorry, earth, water, air. Okay. You do not know when, uh, where in the sequence it will begin, but once you are familiar with an animal's attack pattern, you should quickly be able to tell its next move and turn the fight to your advantage. Okay, so it's for the... It's, this one is earth, water, and air. Okay. Let us begin with a simple bite. Being of the neutral earth element, this is a relatively safe choice. So let's... Uh, use bite. Let us begin. Okay. Ah, the clash. Both of you have been affected, though you have but a tiny scratch. The long ear is more seriously hurt. Cool. Your opponent is battered and worse for wear. Your attacks are having an effect. As creatures, including you, are wounded, their air, water, and fire abilities will decrease, though earth always stands unchanged. Since it used an air attack, and long ears always use earth, water, air, we know that its next move will be an earth technique. Nothing is strong or weak against earth, so any attack will do now. Let us use swift strike, an air attack which affects your opponent before you are affected by its attack. Oh, okay. Air ability. Swift strike, so it does... we do damage first before them. The air grows richer with fear and despair. Your enemy is now injured. Good. Additional effects like swift strikes, uh, preemptive damage always occur if you win the elemental clash. On a tie, they take effect if the element. Sorry. Yeah, on a tie, the they they take effect if the element in question is higher than the opponent's earth. And it was. I'm I'm sure it was. And they never occur on a lost clash. The opponent's next attack will use the water element. Because air is strong against water, let us use swift strike again. Right. Air is good. Yeah, exactly. Alright. The redolent essence of the long ear dances on your tongue. It is crippled and stands in the very shadow of destruction. It's almost dead. Victory! You gain additional damage and trigger a special effect by using air against water. The long ear is now badly hurt, and its next attack will be the air, uh, will be of air. It is time to finish this. So air, so fire is good against air. Yeah, breathing fire will bypass most armor, but it costs energy to use, unlike most simple attacks. Oh, it is time. All right, use the fire ability, burning breath. Oh, sorry, I can't use anything. Okay, breathing fire by oh sorry. Is it dead? Well, yeah, I guess. Ah, delicious indeed. Future meals will rarely be so easy, however. Be sure to use stalking to observe and get as close as you can. Pursue your prey swiftly and fight wisely. 
the great four, water, air, earth, and fire, shall be your guides. Beware, however, the good beasts of field and woodland are not the only beings in this world. Some have strange gifts, and others, such as the no-tails, may use their bizarre minds to break the rules of the dance. You gain some energy. Oh, another day? Maybe we can explore a bit more. Can I? Let's see. Wow, it's already been an hour and ten minutes. Let's, let's do a little bit more. Because it seems like there's a lot of content in this demo. As the new sun rises, you might, uh, you might well feel pleased with your accomplishments. You've explored your surrounding, surroundings and successfully fulfilled your purpose of destruction. Your core is no longer no, your core no longer aches, so I'm not hungry anymore. And you can turn to other pursuits. There is one matter which refuses to leave your mind. When you explore the warm, uh, warm or bef uh, meadow, there was a scent. The there you simply could not ignore. Could it be some kind of prey or perhaps a treasure of some kind? You set out to discover a new truth. Oh, so we're going to the. Wow, this looks lovely. Your exploration of the warm, warmward meadow and the strange scent, ta scent takes you into a vast region of rising hills, lightly uh, furred with brown uh, wheater and scaled with grey boulders. Air dances more freely here than among the trees and many tiny beings flit to and fro. You have now been exploring for less than half a sun when the chirping song of the beings hidden in the grass suddenly stops and a massive shadow falls over you. Something huge and winged circles above. An adult kin. Really? Oh crap. Suddenly it all becomes it becomes clear. The scent you found was the border mark of an elder of your people and you have uh, thoroughly invaded its territory. Oh that's not good. Before you can meaningfully react it is before you, landing uh, surprisingly gracefully and quietly across your path. Oh crap. Okay, that's really cool though. That's really freaking cool. That looks awesome. Great artwork, by the way. And, and, and all hand painted. Awesome. It is vast and beautiful, like a great nation unto itself, but blue with accents like the storm gray rocks of the hills. Its scales bear the hundred thousand marks of the lovely brutality of kin life, and yet its essence shines healthy and bright from its melted gold eyes. The midnight slit of its pupil eyeing you surprisingly calmly. One of its teeth, you notice, is jet black. In your mind, you label this skin Dark Tooth. <laughs> when it sings to you, you are shocked by the lucidity of the of the color in its uh, uh, thought images, as well as the clear, sharp lines with which it divides its ideas. It is by far the loveliest song you have ever heard, more beautiful by far than the voice you heard while still in the chamber. Interlopers, inter oh, interloper, interloper, small and barely begun, sing to this elder kin of your future. Shall you perish here? For your crime of violating the territory of a greater being, or will you live beyond the fall of this sun? Uh, let's see. Attempt to distract Dark to to make your escape. I'm not gonna escape. Sing a song of defiance. You will live. You sing, for you will defeat the Dark Tooth uh, Challenger. Sing a song of repentance. Whether you live or die, it is not yours to choose now, but the choice of the greater being whom you have angered. Yeah, that's true. That's true. He, it, it has all the power, whatever it is. He, it, it, she, whatever. So let's acknowledge that. After hearing your song and watching your low-headed dance of submission, Dark to, dark to Tail settles into a less threatening position. Humility is the beginning of wisdom. You may perhaps taste the morning sun's rays again. Oh, nice! We got some earth and one. Wait, wait, let me see. Earth mastery. Okay, and oh, some air. Okay, so we got, we got, so we got experience for everything, almost. Oh, sorry. Um, as you lie there, 
flattened in submission, images begin to enter your mind. A sequential song of images and concepts, and it draws on you that you are being instructed. Dark Tooth is teaching you many things. The song of Annunci Annunciation, in which you declare your presence in another kin's territory and request audience. The song of Welcome. The song of Challenge and many other songs which unfold from the first. Dances which communicate more complex emotions and intentions than the one you already know. Dances of respect, of warning, of curiosity, of uncertainty. Now, barely begun. What is your... what is my intention? I do not intend to destroy you and consume your young, tender flesh. Speak of my hidden mind. Uh, let's see. Okay, Let, let's let's play smart. I cannot know your vast mind and will not presume to do so. Yeah, let's do that. Your humility is fitting, but it is not for naught. Open your mind and your senses to what I have done. Would I instruct a being which I want? Uh, I was to destroy. Instruction is for those who will live to use it. Time is precious to all. Learn to listen, not only to hear. Okay, we got some Earth Mastery and Air Mastery. Uh, almost. Almost level up. Okay. Darktooth extends its long neck towards you, bringing its vast stone blue head so close that you can feel the wind of its breath. You cannot help but tremble, but resist, resist the urge to strike or flee. The elder kin flicks its tongue out, tasting the air around you, taking a moment to savor, savor your scent. Its tail curls slowly as it settles back into the heater. Uh, its head is turned to the side, looking away from you as though it is singing to itself. As one sun sets, another rises. It is now but a spark, tiniest of flames. To survive, it must learn the great contradiction. To every virtue, there is an opposite which must be equally embraced. It must be bold, yet cautious. Proud, yet humble. Quick, yet slow. Fierce, yet gentle. It must learn to spread itself between many truths. The layered habits lies within the land of the tailless ones, the broken custodians. If it would blind, if it would, if if it would build a land of its own, its destiny lies coldward in the great green. So I I need to move out. I need to move from from where I am. It may survive in this valley for a short time. But it must leave before two moons have passed. Oh. If it, if it does not, it shall be destroyed. I sing this to myself for my own amusement. Payment is not required. The Elder's Tail thumps once on the ground gently for one of its size, but you still feel the tremor. Let's see. Ask for the dark to help against the tailless. Alright, request permission to leave. You slide sideward slowly, miming the act of turning around without actually doing so, suggesting a retreat with your body. Dark tooth accepts the request by rising and spreading its vast wings. On a new sun, once again we shall stand on this plane. The newly begun and the elder. And you shall grow stronger. Do not return empty mouth. Nothing shall be given for nothing. And something for something. So I need to bring it food. It bounces forward, sliding over your submissive form as though it were nothing but a tiny shrub, gathering more momentum and then spreads its wings. Uh, spreading its wings is borne aloft. It turns a wide circle in the in the air, flying over you. That which is above is like that which is below. It intones directly into your mind as it soars higher. All beings are endings. Oh, sorry, all beginnings, not beings. Just 
and all endings beginnings. You remove yourself from the edge of its territory as swiftly as you can and wonder whether it will have the courage to re you will have the courage to return to this place again. Well, we have to, right? Eventually. And a new day breaks and we need to leave. Right. Or maybe two moons means two months. I don't know. A new sun has risen and the choice of how you to spend is it is yours. Uh, to spend it is yours. You have only a short time to discover the wonders of this valley, to survive, learn and grow before the no-tails discover your presence and come for you. From now on you shall be your own guide. Remember what you have learned. Hunt when you are hungry, rest when injured, and make good use of the body and mind you have to discover the secrets of Heart Bone Valley. A few dozen suns, if dark to uh, dark to this correct, so that's okay. So it's probably well, 24 days, kind of like that. And then you must leave this temporary den of the emerald reaches, for the emerald reaches of the great green, that vast unclaimed empire of trees which lies cold world from here. Your destiny is now in your jaws. The world is yours to discover as it is for all life. So it is, was, and shall be. So I guess now you we have to choose what to do, hunt, explore, or yeah. So uh, you know what I think I'm gonna end here because it's already been an hour and twenty one minutes, and you know, and it it seems like we just scratched the surface of the game, but um, I I really like the the concept. So if you if you want to try it yourself and maybe see more, I'm not really sure how much uh, you can play. I mean, how long part one is? Will you be able to, you know, play for until the humans come for what 24 days? That would be interesting. But you know, uh, you can see that for yourself. If you want to play the demo, you can check it out on itch.io. It's available for free there. So just uh, download it. Again, everyone, that was Golden Treasure, the Great Green, from developer Dreaming Door. Um, in development right now. Really cool, lovely hand painted images. And uh, an interesting, not, not only an interesting story, an interesting concept, right? You being the dragon and you kind of being on your own and you have to discover. And yeah, I, I really like that. It, and it has this RPG element to it, which is, you know, subtle, I guess, with, with the four elements that you, you know, you see. And, uh, you know, I guess this is the experience. And you'll get more abilities as you progress, and you get, you get to use them against you know tougher creatures, and you know maybe maybe you will also survive. So everyone, that was Golden uh, Treasure, the Great Green. Uh, check out the demo on itch.io uh, itch right now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up really quick. And if you like what I do here, consider subscribing. That would be actually immensely immensely helpful. If you could subscribe, tell other people about the channel, spread the word, check out the back catalog too, because I have over 2,210 videos at this point. So there's tons and tons of cool games, mostly indie games, to discover on there. And uh, last but not least, if you can, take half a minute to see the ways through which you can support me. You can either give me a direct donation through PayPal, or you can support me with the purchases that you make on the Epic Games Store, the Humble Store, Fanatical. All you have to do in those cases is either use an affiliate link or a creator tag. It costs you absolutely nothing extra, so it's a very small thing that you can do, but it goes a long way. Just, you know, get the games that you want from, from those stores and... Um, you know, and tell those stores, you know, to, to send uh, a, a little bit of the, of the money you spend there my way, um, if you can. Uh, last but not least, the Brave Browser, download it through the referral link, try it out, you're gonna like it. I've been using it for two months now and it replaced Chrome for me, which is a big thing, you know, since I've been using Chrome for many, many years. And, you know, most people, I, I guess, uh, would be in the same boat. Um, it's a browser that's based on Chromium, so it is going to be familiar if you use Chrome already, if you use Opera. And it's a browser that has a built-in ad blocker, it, bla it blocks trackers. So if you don't want a billion, literally a billion, well, maybe not literally, but you know, a large amount of companies, that some that you know, some that you have no idea that they exist, uh, to have a very detailed profile of you and your online activity, try it. You know, check it out, 
and you know let me know what you think in uh, in the comment section that was uh, golden treasure again everyone and uh, yeah one hour and 24 minutes that's 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 a long video but uh it's a cool game so thanks again for watching and until the next time we see each other have an awesome day